Traders, I'm your host Peg Young. Well, I hear that the temperatures are on the rise and so are the sales of ice cream and cold drinks. Well, in Korea there's a tradition of having hot things on hot days because afterwards you'll feel cooled off. It's a helpful hint for contenders today who might be feeling the heat of competition. Let's welcome them onto the stage. <laughs> Welcome to our stage. We have the Empire team, Michael Philpot and Glenn Haddikin. So tell us a bit about yourselves. Well, I'm from Newfoundland, Canada, and I've been in South Korea for seven years. And both Glenn and I work at Daegu Catholic University. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'm from St. Helens in Northwest England. Been in Korea for just over four years and having a good time. And thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Now going against the Empire team, we have the BC team, Kang Moon Hwan and Ok Jin Woo. Tell us a bit about yourselves. Hello, we are senior students of Song Jin University. Mm -hmm. And we first met in the English studying group seven years ago. And we hope you could have a fantastic time here. Well, I hope that you guys have a fantastic time as well. Good luck to all of you. Now let us get to the quiz. <laughs> Now in our first section, we'll be giving you 10 multiple choice questions worth 10 points each. You get five seconds to answer per question. Now if you are not sure about a certain question, then you can call out chance once, and we'll take away two of the incorrect choices, and of course that'll give you a 50-50 chance of getting it right. If you get all 10 correct, we get to give you 50 bonus points, so I hope we get to do that today. If you get a question wrong, we'll stop there and give you the sum of points up to that point. Empire, if you're ready, please choose among question sets Q, U, I, and Z. We'll have I. Okay, we will go with question set I, number one. Of the following, how many is a dozen? 1, 6, 2, 12, 3, 24, 4, 100. 2, 12. Check it out. I gather you're liking the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and we go to 2. Of the following, which is not a sport that uses a ball? One soccer, two volleyball, three tennis, four badminton. Number four, badminton. <laughs> the ball got ball. There you go. And we go to question set three. Of the following, what is the appropriate gem that fits into the blank? Blanks before swine. One diamond, two amber, three pearl, four emerald. If you're not sure, you can call out yeah, chance. Uh -huh. I think we're going to have a chance. We'll have a chance. <laughs> okay, then we'll take away two of the incorrect choices. It feels okay. And so, please make your final selection, Empire Team. Got it. I'm going for it. Number, Number three. three pearls before swine. Yes. And that, of course. Hard one is from the Bible, uh, do not throw pearls before swine. And we go to question four. Of the following, who is the lead singer of the Rolling Stones? One, John Lennon, two, David Bowie, three, Robbie Williams, and four, Mick Jagger. Number four, Mick Jagger. And do you like the Rolling Stones? Oh, yes, I do. Have a favorite song? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> and we go to question five. Of the following, Aphrodite is identified with which Roman goddess? One, Medusa, two, Venus, three, Juno, four, Pandora. Final answer, please, Empire Team. I'm sure it's... Number two, Venus. Venus. Yes. <laughs> the goddess of love. We have that on the train. And we go to question six. Of the following, which animal cannot be seen in both rivers and oceans? One salmon, two eel, three tuna, four dolphin. Final answer, please, Empire Team. I'm sure. Number three, tuna. Yes. Yes. Okay. Getting harder. 
Are you glad you went with your partner's answer? Are you glad you went with your partner's answer? Oh, of course. Yes. <laughs> Tuna actually are uh, known for living in deep water, and hence they would not be found in rivers. We'll and we go to question seven. Uh, you can have the fish question. Of the following, who is not a Czech author? One, Franz Kafka. Two, Leon Kruzkowski. Three, Carol Kapek. And four, Milan Kundera. This is really interesting. Idea. These are kind of similar names. Number four? Final answer, Empire Team, please. Number four, Number four Milan Kundera. Uh, Kundera is a Czech author. Uh, Leon uh, Kruszkowski is from Poland. That'll do. You end the section with 60 points. Okay. Now, BC Team, it is your turn to choose Q, U, or Z. I will take you. Okay, we'll go with question set U, number one. Of the following in baseball, an inning changes after how many outs? One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Number three. <laughs> question number two. Of the following, which key exists only on keyboards made in Korea? One enter, two Korean slash English, three shift, four backspace. Number two. And we go to question three. Of the following, which one does not belong? One Siamese, two poodle, three pointer, four dashund. I will take chance. Okay, we'll take away two of the incorrect choices. And please make your final selection, DC team. Uh, number two. Actually, a Siamese is a kind of cat, whereas all of the other three were dogs. You end this section with 20 points. However, you have a lot of the quiz ahead, so I'm sure you can make it up. Empire, you're in the e uh, Empire, you're in the lead with 60 points. Congratulations. Now, this next section is where we get to see how well you work with your teammate. We give you 20 words, I'll give you 100 seconds to go through the list of pre-chosen words. And of course, you cannot use the word or phrase that we give you on the board or else we can't give you credit for it. Empire team, if you're ready, please take your position next to me. Now, your chosen category is <coughs> reptiles and I'm wondering, do you have a favorite one? Favorite reptile? Mm -hmm. Dooley. <laughs> <laughs> the Korean dinosaur character. I like Dooley too. I like iguanas. <laughs> oh, you like iguanas. Hmm, let's see if that's on the list. Are you ready? Yes. Go. A, like a crocodile. Alligator. What we eat in the breakfast? Eat for breakfast. Eggs. L, like a gecko. Lizard. What they have on their backs? Shell. No. Scales. Yes. Uh, what the type of uh, pest? Uh, we have warm, but they have cold blood. Cold blood. Uh, in Jurassic Park. Dinosaurs. What we breathe with? Ah, uh, mouth. What we breathe? The Lung, organ. Lungs. Uh, the Japanese uh, cartoon. Godzilla. Yes. Uh, this can bite you. Snake. And it's like a king, but... Queen snake. No, a king... King cobra. Cobra. Yes. Uh, this changes its colors. Chameleon. Uh, ah, it's like a gecko. Iguana. A, it can swallow you. Big Anaconda. Snake. Pass. A uh, really strange type of dinosaur. It's in Africa, I believe. Uh, pass. Uh, this shakes... Rattlesnake. Yes. Pass. 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 Give me a letter. Uh, it's... 17th letter of the alphabet. I don't know. You can circle letter. Mm, begins with a V. Viper. Velociraptor. It's a letter.
Sapphire, uh, you, I think we're a little bit flustered at the end. You <laughs> gave the letter as part of the hint. V, we were going for the series oh, on television. Uh, the reptilian people, TV they walked about. Uh, <laughs> um, her pedophobia is the fear of reptiles, and Jacobson's organ God, is God, the organ that is in the mouths that enough. senses uh, okay. in okay. reptiles. You Close. end the section with a great 190 points. Great job. <laughs> Now, BC team, if you're ready, please take your position. So, uh, you're going for related to laws. Yes. Uh, are you interested in the study of law? No. <laughs> so, you have to study up on this. Yeah, I have to study. Mm, are you ready? Yes. Go. The people uh, decided uh, this is election. And uh, people, they in the, in the in the court, judge, yes, pass the place. I said before court, the American drama. Uh, she's a she's a lawyer. Yes. Uh, it's, it's money for bail uh, money, uh, not crime. F Fine. It's uh, kind of written law. C. Pass. Uh, do you ever watch the movie E? She, uh, she's suing for the company, the environmental problem. E. Pass. Pass. Uh, without lawyer, uh, people do this as sue, pass. Daniel Washington and Tom Hanks, the movie P, about the AIDS, the people who got AIDS. Philadelphia? Yes. The movie, uh, the people who want to. I know you knew the words, but they were kind of tough to describe sometimes. Yeah. Um, well, we ended up not getting to client, the person yeah. who goes to find the lawyer. And uh, uh, you could use it for uh, defending yourself, self-defense. And um, Aaron Brokovich was Brokovich. the title of the law, uh, the movie starring uh, yeah. uh, Julia, Roberts. Julia Roberts. Yes. You end the section with 70. However, Empire, you're still in the lead with 190 points. Congratulations. Now, a section that many fans wait for. Mr. Kim Jun Sung will come out with the questions. So, how do you see our match today? Well, uh, BC, they didn't do very well in the last section, but uh, there are a lot of points left still. So, don't worry. Might have to watch out for a comeback in this last section. So. Uh, Anyways, let me go ahead and explain the rules. Uh, this round is a round of 15 non-multiple choice questions. Each question is worth 30 points. Uh, the first team that buzzes in can answer. If the team cannot answer the question or gets the answer wrong, then the question will go over to the other team. And um, you have five seconds to answer. And when both teams are not able to answer the question, we will give you a spelling hit. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to wait for me to call out your team names before you share your answers with us. Ready? Okay, let's have question number one, please. Okay, question number one is about religion. A Muslim woman, Sultana Freeman, who was suing to keep her veil on for her driver's license photo, took the stand. She says Florida's insistence on photogra uh, photographing her face violates her religious rights. A copy of this book was entered into evidence. BC. Quran. Yes. The Quran is the sacred text that she used. And we go to question two. Okay, question number two is about survey. Dubai and this city's Changi are the world's favorite international airports, according to a survey released by the global airlines body IATA. 
Passengers rated the two just ahead of Hong Kong and Copenhagen's Kastrup, which were in third and fourth place respectively. Where is the Changi Airport located? Very small, hot. Southeast Asia. Empire. Singapore. Yes. And we go to question number three. Okay, question number three is about a person. Rise of the political machine. This person told reporters he's got his eye on the California government governorship, but said he's waiting until the release of T3, the rise of the machines, this and which will be released this summer. BC. How much question? Maybe he's going to follow in the footsteps of Ronald Reagan. We'll have to see. And it's good to see you on the board, BC team. Let's go to question number four. Okay, uh, question number four is about goods. Foreigners living in Korea selected cars and computers as Korea's best products instead of kimchi. BC. Cellular phone. Mm -hmm. And of course, that is the symbol of IT Korea. And why don't we have the next question? Okay, question number five is about celebration. Every year since at least 1954, fans of author James Joyce have celebrated this day on June 16th, the date when his Ulysses takes place in 1904. In Dublin, or Dublin, <laughs> tourists dress up and retrace the routes of Leopold and Molly Blank, two of the novel's main characters. What is this day? Hmm, the day that we are going for. Why don't we take a look at the spelling hint? BC. What do you say? All this day? Uh, no. mm. Empire? Doomsday. Mm. Mm. I think you have to count the squares out again. <laughs> and I'll give you both teams five seconds. Empire. Bloomsday? Yes. <laughs> and we go to question six. Okay, number six is about animal. Scientists in Hong Kong have to find animals to test a vaccine against the SARS virus on, and that, not, that might not be easy. They have to find this animal that is specific, pathology-free, meaning it hasn't had any disease, any disease like SARS in the past. This is a medium-sized primate found mostly in tropical areas. What is this animal? Medium-sized primate found mostly in tropical areas. Why don't we take a look at the hint and empire. Monkey. <laughs> BC, I see that Empire is very quick with the buzzer. And we go to question number seven. Okay, number seven is about issue. Preparations are underway for a Middle East summit after the Israeli government backed the international peace plan known as this. This is intended to be a Empire? The roadmap to peace? Good job, and we go to question number eight. Okay, number eight is about city. By choosing this city for the G8 summit... BC. ABM. <laughs> and so protesters seem to be heading elsewhere, like Geneva, to make their protests known. And we go to question number nine. Okay, number nine is about a plane. Perhaps this is the most unmistakable plane in the world. Empire. Concord. BC, it's your chance to answer, and he'll finish the question. Television stations break into regular programming to show the enormous plane landing. With 2003, it marks the 60th year of U.S. presidential air travel. What is the official airplane of the President of the U.S.? BC, five seconds. One. BC? Oh. Air Force One. <laughs> BC, I want to remind you only to share your answer with us after I've called out your team name. And we go to question 10. Okay, number 10 is about civilization. Archaeologists have discovered what they describe as a previously unknown ancient civilization in Nicaragua. The newly discovered civilization is similar to those uh, the societies that preceded this civilization further to the north. What is a civilization in Central America? BC. Inca. Empire, five seconds. Why 
Why don't we take a look at the hint? Empire. Gamma. BC, five seconds. BC. Maya. <laughs> and BC, you are gaining 250 versus Empire's lead of 310 points. We'll go on to the next question. Is that, is that a Beckham shirt, by the way? No, <laughs> just England. Just England? Okay. <laughs> If it was Beckham, I, would, I was going to say you'd like to work your magic right now, you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, number 11 <laughs> is about economy. Uh, the record rise of the euro against the dollar and sterling has sparked fears that it could push eurozone countries into this. This is a reduction of general economic activity, including lower prices and... BC. Deflation. Next one is ours. BC, you are closing in. 280 versus Empire's 310 points. We go on to question 12. Okay, number 12 is about textiles. Recently, a hair dye using proteins extracted from this was developed in Korea. This hair dye causes the least damage to hair and ensures lasting color. This is a fine fiber that blank worms secrete to make... Empire. Soak. And we go on to question number 13 now. Yep, still not out of the woods yet. Okay, <laughs> number 13 is about science. These kinds of crops will, be, uh, will need monitoring for years if they are grown, scientists say. This is used to describe an organism that has received genetic material from another. Empire. Genetically modified. Yes. yes. <laughs> and we're at 14 now. Okay, number 14 is about tidal. On June 21st, 1978, this musical written by Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice opens in London. This is based on the life of the Argentine political figure, Eva Perón. What is... Empire. Evita. And we've already come to our last question of this section. Question number 15, please. And that's about Avenue. Last month, France's national railway operator SNCF started heaving old steam locomotives and futuristic high-speed trains onto tracks specially laid along this tree-lined avenue, famous for its big-name shops and nightlife. What is this per uh, Paris's most famous avenue? BC. Yes. Champs-Élysées is the famous road, and well, despite your strong ending BC team, Empire wins and gets to go to the final round. Congratulations. <laughs> At the beginning of the quiz, you wanted to make fantastic memories. <laughs> uh, well, how do you feel? Well, it's okay, and we hope they could have a good result in the last match, and we had a great, great time. But after the show is over, I'm sure you're going to go back home thinking, what if we did better in the second section, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit. You know. So Empire is actually pretty fortunate in that respect, although they did a very good job, and we'll see how they do in this next round. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining us, BC team. Thank you. Thank you. And now Empire team, we'll be right back after this. Let us welcome back the R&B team. <laughs> Reese, Rajoki, and Shin Young Bo, it's good to have you guys back on stage. Mm -hmm. I hear that you're, you come all the way here to Seoul for our studio um, from Ulsan. Yeah, right. And, well, did you know Empire team is from Daegu? Oh, really? We're having kind of a rivalry of the cities today. <laughs> what did your friends say upon your win? Uh, Reese and I, we play soccer together in the same time, the mm -hmm. uh, same team, mm -hmm. and they didn't even know we applied for the show. So when we told them, they were so surprised that they couldn't believe it. But they were happy for you? Maybe, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how, who wins, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Okay. Right. Well, good luck to you today. And, well, good luck to you, Empire team, as well. Now let us begin the final round. Our final section is made up of five categories of questions, and we give you five questions per category, 10 to 50 points each. If you get a question correct, you get to choose the next question. If you get it wrong, well, the chance to answer goes over to your opponents. What are today's categories? All right, uh, today's categories are Days in June, Mobile Life, Frontier Women, Armchair Travel, and Dental Sense. And I get to choose question number one, and I will go with Days in June for 10 points. Charles Blondin was considered to be one of the greatest tightrope walkers. He became obsessed with the idea of crossing the falls the first time he saw them in 1858. R&B. Niagara. Yes. Oh. And on June 30th, 1859, he became the first man to cross the Niagara Falls uh, by tightrope. Actually, he walked across this expanse on just a three-inch rope. Pretty frightening. Did he live a long life? <laughs> well, yes, I think so. I, did, I didn't okay. hear of him falling to his death. R&B, you already are on the board with 10 points. Empire, I want to encourage you to buzz in as quickly as you can because R&B is pretty tough. R&B, you get to choose. Yeah, days in June for 20 points. Days in June for 20 points. Gebhardt Leberecht von Bluch, von Bluche. <laughs> The Prussian field marshal was defeated at Ligny, but arrived at this battle in time to make it a victory. British General Arthur Wellesley, 1st Duke of Wellington, is best known for his victory at this battle. Empire. Battle of Trafalgar. Hmm. I will finish the question and RMB, it's your chance to answer. British General Arthur Wellesley, 1st Duke of Wellington, is best known for his victory at this battle. On June 18, 1815, they gave French Emperor and General Napoleon his final defeat at this battle. It ranks as a great turning point in modern history. What is the site of the battle, which is in what is now Belgium? R&B, five seconds. R&B. Waterloo. Yes, it is the Battle of Waterloo. Good attempt, Empire. However, R&B, you get to choose. Days in June for 30 points. Days in June for 30 points. Muhammad is the founder of Islam, whose prophetic teachings encompassing political and social as well as religious principles became the basis of Islamic civilization and have had a vast influence on world history. He was born in Mecca. On June 8th, 632, he died suddenly and unexpectedly in this city. Before the hegerah of him from Mecca to the city in 622, R&B. Medina. Yes. And Medina used to be called Yathrib. And in Arabic, it is Medinat an Nabi, or City of the Prophet. And of course, it is in Western Saudi Arabia today. Empire, I want to encourage you. And R&B, you get to choose. Yeah, days in June for 40 points, please. Days in June, staying in the category 40 points. On June 15th, 1977, Spain held its first democratic elections in 41 years. It was less than two years after the death of this person. R&B. Franco. Yes. And during the Spanish Civil War, he was the leader of the National Forces, and of course, he was the Spanish general and dictator. And R&B, you get to choose. Uh, can we close the category, days in June? Sure. Days in June, 50 points. On June 29th, 1954, the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission refused to reinstate the security clearance of this person, citing his past ties to communists. It made him a security risk despite his previous leadership positions and performance. Subsequently, efforts were made to clear his name, and in 1963, the AEC conferred on him its highest honor, the Enrico Fermi Award. Who is this American physicist 
the father of the bomb, R&B. Um, Oppenheimer. J. Robert Oppenheimer, and he directed the development of the first atomic bombs. And R&B, it's your chance to pick again. Mm, mobile life for 10 points, please. Mobile <clears throat> life for 10 points. Okay, for 10 points. Digital cameras are almost a necessity to the younger generation. A digital camera records and stores photographic images in digital form that can be fed to a computer as the impressions are recorded or stored in the camera for later loading into a computer. What determines picture quality is this. This R&B. Pixel. And that is the combination of the term picture element, pixel, and empire. I want to encourage you. R&B is pretty tough. You got to buzz in as quickly as you can once you know what you want to go for. And R&B, you get to choose. Yeah, mobile life for 20 points, please. Mobile life for 20 points. Okay, for 20 points. The idea of this is generally credited to Alan Kay of Xerox, who sketched out the idea in 1971. Empire. Scanner. R&B, it's your chance to answer, and he'll finish the question. Good guess. It is likely to be used initially in niche applications such as healthcare or, or by field service workers who need a computer more powerful but can do away with a keyboard. Last year, Microsoft unveiled this, a wireless personal computer that allows a user to take notes using natural handwriting with a digital pen on a touch screen. What is this computer? R&B, five seconds. R&B. PDA. Listen carefully. We're looking for a wireless compu personal computer that allows a user to take notes using natural handwriting with a digital pen. Empire. Notepad? RMB, five seconds. RMB? Note pen? <laughs> We're looking for tablet PC. You had the right idea. And I will choose Frontier Women for 10 points. In 1992, Junko Tabe became the first woman to achieve mountaineering's holy grail, climbing the seven highest peaks of the world. Almost 30 years ago, traditionalists in Japan tried to persuade her that a woman could never climb this mountain. But, Empire? Mount Everest. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> On May 29th in 2003, this year, uh, she actually joined Nepal celebrations marking the 50th anniversary of the first attempt, uh, ascent to, of Mount Everest. And of course, Mount Everest is the world's highest mountain. Good to see you on the board, Empire Team. You get to choose. Oh, OK. Let's try um, Frontier Women for 20. Frontier Women for 20 points. The last woman was American Babe Didrikson Zaharias at the 1945 Los Angeles Open. This person, 32, dominated last year when she won 13 times, the most wins by a woman in nearly 40 years, winning close to $3 million. Traditionally, the Colonial is a professional male golfer's event. And R&B. Annika Sorenstam. She was the first woman in 58 years to play in a PGA Tour men's event, and she is Swedish. R&B, you get to choose. Yeah, Frontier Women for 30 points, please. Frontier Women for 30 points. Sally K. Ride is the U.S. astronaut who, in 1983, became the first woman in the American space program to take part in an orbital mission. Her first flight into space was made on June 1983 aboard this shuttle. However, unfortunately, in 1986, Empire... Challenger? Yes. She had to investigate the explosion of the Challenger, which she had been on and made history on. And Empire, you get to choose. Frontier Women for 50. Closing the category, Frontier Women for 50 points. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> 50 points. This person was born sometime between 630 and 612 BC. 
Her wealth afforded her with the opportunity to live a life she chose, and she chose to spend it studying the arts on the Isle of Lesbos, a cultural center in the 7th century BC. Plato elevated her from great lyric poet to one of the muses. She is one of the great Greek lyricists and who few known female poets of the ancient world. Who is this Greek poet? Uh, the name of the island she lived on, R&B. Sappho? Yeah. Mm. And the name of the island she was on, Lesbos Island, gives the origin to the word lesbian. And R&B, you get to choose. Uh, let's let's close, the, close the category, frontier women. Finally, closing the category, <laughs> frontier women, 40 points. Back in 1996, this person vaulted into the spotlight of the communications revolution by leading the spin-off of AT&T's 120,000 employee equipment arm, Lucent Technologies. To her, telecom equipment was the foundation of the digital age. Her marketing savvy, energy, and single-minded conviction persuaded investors that she was right. At present, she has been CEO at Hewlett Packard since 1999. Who is this person? The name on the cover of Forbes. It's either you know or you don't. So we might. Armby. McDonald. Empire, five seconds. Empire? McDonagall. We're looking for Fiorina. <laughs> The woman. What kind of name would that be? Uh, German? Uh, Italian? Fiorina. Oh, Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and we go with armchair travel, 10 points. Okay, for 10 points. Today, with the technology we have, we can physically travel around the world in about a day. In Jules Verne's classic novel, Phileas Farr reads in a newspaper that it is possible to travel around the world in this number of days. R&B. 80 days. <laughs> yeah. And RMB, you get to choose. Yeah, armchair travel for 20 points, please. Armchair travel for 20 points. Okay. Danish born Karen Blixen Finnick spent the better part of 18 years living on a farm in Kenya. When she returned to Denmark after plantation went bankrupt, she published her memoirs under the pen name Isaac Denison. RMB. Out of Africa. And of course, there was a movie starring Meryl Streep and Robert Redford, very beautiful film based on the novel or the book. And RMB, you get to choose. Yeah, let's continue to armchair travel for 30 points, please. Armchair travel, 30 points. This person penned the travels of blank in the 13th century. It has been called one of the greatest adventure books of all time. This colorful account, colorful account of his travels throughout Asia offers. Empire. Marco Polo. Yes. <laughs> this ben Venice born merchant was a great travel author. Good to see you on the board, Empire, and you get to choose. Let's try Dental Sense for 10, please. Dental Sense for 10 points. Hello, contenders. My name is Hong Jio, and I'm a dentist. Since old times, people with healthy teeth have been considered very lucky. There are many kinds of new ways to take care of your teeth. I hope all you have a good habit of brushing your teeth for your health. Let's start with the questions. Snaggle teeth, cute or scary? If this person didn't have a snaggle teeth, he would have very different image. Empire. Count Dracula. <laughs> And Empire, you get to choose. We'll try Dental Sense for 20. Dental Sense for 20 points. This substance has been used in foods since the 1960s. Over 25 years of testing in R&B. Fluorine. Empire, it's your chance to answer, and he'll finish the question. Different conditions confirm that this is the best sweetener for teeth. It is the popular sweetener for the diabetic diet in some countries. 
This is a sugar substitute or a small dietary addition which has demonstrated a dramatic reduction in tooth decay. It is used for making sugar-free chewing gums and candies. What is this? Empire, five seconds. Empire? Saccharin, sodium saccharide. The chance to answer is open to both teams. This is a sugar substitute or small dietary addition, which has demonstrated a dramatic reduction in tooth decay. It's a very popular product now in Korea. RMB. Xylitol. Yes. The Finnish name for it is koibu sokeri, or birch sugar, derives from the fact that the best way to make xylitol industrially is from birch, the tree. And RMB, you get to choose. Dental sense for 30 points, please. Dental sense for 30 points. Although humans typically have 32 teeth, this is a valuable asset to the mouth when they are healthy and properly positioned. Often, however, this tooth is not needed for chewing and because it can power. R&B. Wisdom tooth. <laughs> and because it can crowd other teeth, it is often removed and usually appears in young adulthood. And this is what we call our four uh, backmost teeth. And in Korea, it is called 차랑니, or the love tooth, because it is said to appear at a time when people fall in love for the first time. And why is that? Why is it different? Hmm? Why, why is it different like in, in the West, it's, it's called wisdom teeth? And, I think mm. the concept is pretty similar though, because the first time you fall in love is this, you acquire wisdom at about that age, or we hope to acquire wisdom with adulthood. It seems like you acquire wisdom after you fall out of love. And <laughs> 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 similar concept, I think. Yeah. And Army, you get to choose. A dental sense for 40 points. Dennis, dental sense for 40 points. This has been used successfully for more than 30 years, and research studies have clearly established the safety and effectiveness of it. This is the best alternative to natural teeth and a replacement for Empire. Dentures, false teeth. Dentures. RMB, it's your chance to answer, and I'll finish the question. Root of a tooth. It looks like a screw or a cylinder and is placed into your jaw. The bone and this are allowed to bond together to form an anchor for an artificial tooth. What is this? RMB, five seconds. RMB? Can? Hmm. I'm going to give you an additional hint. This is the best alternative to natural teeth and replacement for the lost root of a tooth as well as the tooth empire. Root canal? RMB, five seconds. <laughs> RMB. A root filling? Obviously, you guys have really healthy teeth. <laughs> <laughs> what we're looking for is dental implant. You have a screw embedded into your bone, and it grows strong, and you actually have a tooth It's the same, to it. same as what you said, root filling, but we're looking for the answer, <laughs> dental <laughs> implant. But who knows, I mean, except for this dentist right here, right? So, anyways. <laughs> and I will go with uh, armchair travel for 40 points. All right, <clears throat> for 40 points. A classic of adventure writing, Seven Pillars of Wisdom, A Triumph, is the exciting tale of this person written by himself. It has all of the elements of a great adventure and focusing on his exploits in the British Army while helping Arab forces fight the occupying Turks during World War I. It is part military history and part intense personal examination. Who is this person? He was part of the British Army helping Arab forces fight occupying Turks during World War I. Empire? Winston Churchill. Uh, RMB? Five seconds. RMB? Livingston. I gotta give this hint. He, I got, let me give this hint. Yeah. I got a good hint right here. All right. The key is while helping air forces fight the occupying Turks during World War I. And they also based a movie on this. The fact that this person helped. Arab forces fight the Turks. An old movie. RMB. Snoopy? 
Empire. Lawrence of Arabia? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that a good hint? That was a good hint, right? That How come you said Snoopy? Hint. How could you say Snoopy? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you gave Arab and you were hinting like this. Yeah, right? Arab, Arab, <laughs> Arab. <laughs> and <laughs> Empire, you get to choose. We'll try finishing out Dental Sense. Sure, Dental Sense. 50 points. These animals live in habitats like uh, ponds, oceans, forests, grasslands, and even deserts. While some prehistoric ones had teeth, no modern ones possess real teeth. Today they are toothless and use their sharp, hard, and horny jaws that are able to... Empire! Birds? Birds. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> R&B, it's your chance to answer and he'll finish the question. Bite and handle food. Early on, they also had not yet evolved the ability to pull their heads into their shells. What is this animal with a shell covering body and no teeth? R&B, five seconds. R&B. Terrapin? We are looking for Empire. Turtles. Yes. yes. <laughs> Horny jaw was a dead giveaway there, right? Horny jaw? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, OK. <laughs> and Empire, you get to choose. Uh, I'll try armchair travel for 50. Armchair travel, 50 points. OK, for 50 points. Uh, when Nick Thorpe signed on as crew member to the Veracocha, or Veracoca, sorry, in 1999, he knew it would be no ordinary journey. He recounts with humor and wry wit in the book Eight Men and a Duck, an improbable voyage by reed boat to the blank. Their mission was to complete a voyage across the Pacific from South America to this island. It is noted for its huge carved stone heads. R&B. East on. And in the South Pacific and belongs to Chile. And it was named for the date of its discovery on Christian Festival Day in 1722. We would have taken Rapa Nui as well. And RMB, you get to choose. Yeah, mobile life for 30 points, please. Mobile life for 30 points. Okay, for 30 points. The technical is political. A British skipper of a yacht casts his vote by phone from the South China Sea. Recently, new voting methods increased turnouts. Uh, voters in some schemes are able to co cast votes using this. This is similar to paging. However, it does not require the mobile phone to be active and within range and will be held for a number of days. This is a service for sending messages to mobile phones. What is RMB. this? Email? And Empire. Empire. Text messaging? Mm. This is a service for sending messages to mobile phones. We're looking for the exact name. Exact name mm. of this service. English, so no muncha or whatever. <laughs> so, I will give you five seconds. Hmm. We're looking for SMS or short message service. <clears throat> And why don't we go with mobile life for 40 points? Okay, for 40 points. This is designed specifically for mobile computing with built-in wireless LAN capability and breakthrough mobile performance by Intel. It also enables extended, extended battery life and sleek, easy-to-carry notebook PCs. This new Intel mobile technology is represented by a new logo carrying the famous Intel Inside mark. The logo featuring a striking magenta color and a completely new shape suggests mobility and forward movement. What is this? New Intel mobile technology is represented by a new logo carrying the famous Intel RMB. Uh, wheel. Can I change? Empire, five seconds. Empire. An arrow. R&B. Freeze aerial. Empire, five seconds. Empire. Finger. <laughs> uh, we were looking for Centrino. 
That is the new logo. And now we have just one question left on the board, mobile life. It's been a pretty tough category for us. Why don't we go with the last question? Yes, it's a tough category for 50 points. The idea of this first arose from contemplating the place of today's computer in actual activities of everyday life. Pervasive computing is a trend towards increasing this. I read this slow, this is very verbose. This describes uh, an environment of connected computing devices in all environments brought about by a convergence of... RMB. CDMA. Empire, it's your chance to answer and he'll finish the question. Um, brought about by a convergence of advanced electronic and particularly wireless technologies and the internet. In 1993, Mark Weiser said that this means computing access will be everywhere. What is this called? Empire, five seconds. Empire. Modem, wireless modem. I'm going to give you guys a hint. This comes from the Latin word meaning existing everywhere. RB. Existentialism. Existentialism. Empire, five seconds. <laughs> Empire? Internet. We were looking for U computing or ubiquitous computing. Ubiquitous or existing everywhere. And with that, well, that was pretty tough on all of us. But RMB, you win for the second time in a row. Congratulations. Various prizes are awaiting our winning contenders. Your first win will take you on a trip to Jeju Island. Your second win to Japan. Your third win will take you to China. And on your fourth win, you'll win a trip to Southeast Asia. On your fifth win, a trip to Hawaii. Your sixth win, a trip to the United States. And on your seventh win, you'll take the grand prize of a tour of Europe. We hope many of you join us. Empire, you joined us all the way from Tegu today. Thank you for coming up and joining us. You did a great job. Um, you have any words for supporters? Just thank you for watching. And have, sorry we didn't do any better. Yeah. Thank you for the <laughs> chance. It was very fun. Yep. Thank you very much for joining us. And RMB, you were talking about your soccer team being surprised. They're going to be really <laughs> surprised this time because you've won second yeah. time. Uh, so, are you satisfied with number two or are you going to go for three? Yeah, but I think I, I have to study a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to study before you come back. Yeah. Yes. Well, congratulations again on your second win. Our R&B team has won a second time in a row. Will they make it to three? Well, join us next week. Same time, same place, and we'll see. Have a great week. Bye-bye.